In the previous lesson, we learned how to make data available down through a nested component tree with the provide and inject APIs. And, in the component props lesson, we learned that we can communicate from a parent component down to a child with props. Well, component events allow us to communicate from a child component up to its parent. To send an event from a child up to its parent, we use a simple two-step process. First, we define the event in the child component. Then, we emit that event. Let's start by creating a child component called main menu. Inside it, we'll have a paragraph with some identifying text and a button that we'll use to close the menu later on. Then, we'll nest the main menu inside the root app component. We want to add a data property that controls if the menu is open or not. Finally, we'll add a button that sets the data property to true so that the VF can render the component. If we run the example and click the open menu button, it shows the component. But if we click the close button, nothing happens. We want the close button to send an event to the root app component when it's clicked. The root app component should then use that event to set the data property back to false, closing the menu. We define an event by specifying it in an array in the emits option of the component we want to send the event from. To demonstrate, let's add an event called close menu. To emit the event, we use the special emit instance method with the event name as its argument. The custom event is emitted when a DOM event, like a button click, is fired. To demonstrate, we'll let the button click emit the close menu event. Now, our event will be emitted to any components up in the hierarchy when the user clicks the button. Events aren't auto-captured in a parent component. The parent has to explicitly listen for it. To listen to an event, we bind the emitted event with event binding on the child component instance. As its value, we can specify any functionality that we want to execute when the event triggers. To demonstrate, we'll listen for the close menu event in our root app component on the main menu instance. To keep things simple, we'll use an inline expression that closes the menu. If we run the example in the browser, the menu closes when we click the close menu button. What happens is that when we click the button, it fires the emit method and sends the close menu event to the root app component. The root app component is listening for the close menu event. Once it receives it, it executes the code that sets our data property to false. If we want to send data with the event, we add that data as the second argument in the emit method. To receive the data in the parent component, we have to create a method. The method automatically receives the data as a parameter. To demonstrate, we'll send a name with the close menu event. In the root app component, we'll move the logic that closes the menu to a method called close menu. We'll also capture the emitted data and store it in a data property that we can output in the template. If we close the menu, the event will emit, send data, and be stored in the name data property that shows underneath the button. As a quick note, events aren't the only way to send data from a child to a parent. We can also use slot props, which we cover in the slots video. Similar to validating props passed from a parent component, it's possible to validate custom events emitted from a child component. In our example, we send a hard-coded name through the emitted event when the user clicks on the close menu button. 
Let's adjust our example and add a text input field that takes the name value from the user with the model. If we open the menu, enter a name, and close the menu again, the name we entered will show below the button. So, everything works as expected. Now, let's add a validation when emitting the event. We'll start by changing the emits option from an array to an object. View expects the key to be the custom event name and the value to be the validation function. We'll use the ES6 shorthand syntax and define the key as a function. This function receives the argument we specified when emitting the event. In this case, that's the name data property. If the function returns false, view will display a validation warning in the console. So, in the function body, we can do a simple check to see if the input is empty. If we go to the browser and close the menu without entering a name, view will raise the warning in the console. Even though the validation only provides a warning in the console, it's useful when you're working in a team or creating components that'll be used by other developers. We'll often create form components to be used throughout the application. For example, we may want to style a text input component and use it throughout the application for all text inputs, like a search bar and inputs in a contact form. But the problem is that the vModel directive doesn't know how to behave with a custom component. So, we'll need to add some logic to ensure it works correctly. As an example, we'll create a new component called text input that contains a single text field. Then, we'll import and instantiate text input in the root app component. If we save and take a look in the browser, the input shows as expected. But, if we type a name into the field, it doesn't show in the paragraph above. This indicates that the value wasn't stored in the data property. It's our responsibility to define how the vModel directive behaves with a custom component. When we use vModel on a custom component, it automatically receives a prop called model value. We need to specify this prop with a type in the props option of the config object. Then, we need to bind the prop to the value attribute of the input field with the vBind directive. This takes care of the value from the field, but we still need to handle the input from the user. The vModel directive will automatically listen for an event called update, colon, model value. We have to emit that event with the input value to the parent. So, we bind to the input event on the element and use the emit method to emit the input to the parent. For the first argument, we specify the update model value event that view automatically gives us. As the second argument, we send the data that the user entered by accessing the JavaScript event object with $event.target.value. If we go back to the browser and enter a name, the value will display in the paragraph, indicating that the value is being stored in the name data property. In the next video, we'll learn how to style components and add standalone or external CSS files to your application. Thank you for watching, we'll see you in the next one.